What's up, everybody? My name is Ross Pino. I am Ashley Metro. Hi, I'm Hectad. I'm a contemporary artist based out of New York City, and we are here with G Gallery. So the way that I found my style is I just started painting. It's something that kind of um, comes from this weird place within. I like to say it's almost like a possession. It's just something that I find and I develop and it just kind of comes from um, sitting and, you know, contemplating. Sometimes I'll like, I'll do references for like certain figures, but the line work is all mine. It's kind of a little bit of a reflection of my own frustration with the society that we're in. And I like to, you know, put women in a place of power even though they are sexualized. It's also kind of a part of like drawing attention to the fact that, you know, a lot of these figures are faceless because men don't really see us as anything other than objects for sex. There's no need to have any identifying features beyond that because it's not like, you know, anyone ever really you know, seems to care sometimes. Well, I've always, I've always been a, a, a graffiti, graffiti writer. I've always painted. I started doing graffiti in 1982. I've been painting trains and doing art since then. And now I'm just focused on art, art, instead of like, more, I, I do graffiti too, but mostly art. I've been doing art since 1996 before everybody started doing them. <laughs> So-called getting inspired by me, more like copying me, but I'm not gonna say you know whatever. But um, yeah, I've been I've been doing hearts since '96, and why do I do hearts? Because it's a positive, positive thing. It's not like something hateful or anything like that. You know, I do it for the love to bring people together, to love each other and care for each other and spread love. So that's why I do. I started painting about five and a half years ago, making it to six. And at the beginning, I didn't really know anything about like art, art history, art language, art technique. I, did, I was uneducated when it came to art. And um, a lot of people, they would reference, you know, like a couple different, you know, artists. So oh, your, art, your art looks like this or your art looks like that. Like, uh, and, and and I didn't really pay any attention or take any notice. I just kept doing what I was doing until the critics started coming in and they started really comparing my work to like Basquiat. And I'm like, who is this, who is this guy? Who is this character, this Basquiat guy? And so I did like a quick little Google search of like who Basquiat was and I immediately fell in love with his work. And I didn't know any, I didn't know any other artists. So I, I kind of like was like, man, this, this guy, like amazing art, artist, amazing artwork. And so I kind of like started playing around with like, I guess that, that childlike style that he had. And um, the more that I got that, you know, I was like, well, there's other artists out there. So I'm gonna like, I'm gonna explore, I'm gonna learn more about art, art history, art technique, different other artists that, you know, are out there. And the more that I educated myself, the more that I, you know, opened up a whole new world of, of all these different, you know, like things that I could just pull into my own expression. So I think after like about two years of me painting, I started to develop somewhat of my own style that kind of detoured away from that Basquiat expression or influence. But my artwork still carries, you know, that because he's one of my favorite artists of all times. But I also there's like a whole bunch of different artists that like play into my work. Uh, like Francis Bacon or Ed Templeton, you know, there's, or Danny Fox. Like there's so many different artists out there that are like influencing my work, but people, they tend to see only like the, the famous one, you know, or the, the, the one that stands out the most, which is, it's cool, you know, because, and I find it as a compliment because people, they, they see, you know, like that greatness within my work too, that he carried, right? Um, but I always try to, you know, just keep it my own and talk more about like the spiritual aspects of life. Um, life, death, good, evil, positive, negative. You see like a lot of skeletons and a lot of skulls, you know, in my work, you know, that represents, you know, sometimes a lot of death, a lot of like, um, a lot of like carnal mind, carnal thinking, you know, uh, which leads us to destruction essentially. Um, you'll see like the cube in my work a lot uh, and that has a lot to do with uh, 
you know, the prisons that we sometimes could get ourselves to, into in our mind. Um, you'll see like a lot of numbers, a lot of numerology within my work. And that's because when I started seeing, uh, when I started painting, I started seeing numbers um, as well. And that was really weird to me. I was like, man, what the heck is going on? This is crazy, I'm a lunatic. But really it was like these synchronicities that kept happening in my life that were pointing me in the right direction saying, don't stop. This is your path, this is your, this is your journey. Keep going, like the universe got you. And I just kept going, I kept going. And the more that I kept going and not giving up, the more opportunities started to arise. The more people they just like fell in love with my work, the more I found my tribe and like the people that were supposed to be in my life. And it's just been one hell of a journey. It's been really, really cool, to be honest. Well, the hardest part of being, about, of being an artist is um, being able to survive financially. And um, I don't know, trying to navigate um, a male dominated art world where I am taken, not taken seriously as a female artist and I am constantly sexualized and taken advantage of and put in uncomfortable situations and having to deal with it because, you know, at the end of the day, it's the art world and showbiz baby. The hardest part of being an artist is me wanting to paint everything, but I can't. That's the hardest part. It's a good question. The hardest part about being an artist is uh, probably the balancing act between, you know, socializing, doing art, marketing, social media, the business side of it, just all of it, you know, like there's there's so many moving parts as, as an artist and I think that 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 is the hardest part, especially whenever you like have to do it all yourself and you don't have anybody else to like designate that to, right? Um, but I do, th I do think that, um, that that's where a lot of artists, they fail is that they don't, they don't know how to do all those moving parts of being an artist. They, some, sometimes they just only know how to paint and that's it. And, and that's fine, but that means that they have to like designate, you know, all that other stuff to, you know, like other people to help them out. Um, I think that that's probably one of the hardest parts about being an artist. And also I think another hard part about being an artist is like writing your feelings, like putting your feelings on the canvas, you know, your emotions on the canvas and being vulnerable with that, the highs and the lows and the good and the evil and the right and the wrong and just everything that you've experienced in life and uh, just being vulnerable on the canvas. I think that that's, that's kind of hard. I think that my career and my personal life kind of intertwine. I think that being an artist is definitely um, a great talking point at parties. <laughs> so I think that it kind of naturally flows together. Um, I think it's uh, there's always great things to talk about when it comes to um, art and conversations. And um, I think everyone's creative, so I think everyone has something to relate to when it comes to art. perfect day being an artist for me is is just waking up having no cares in the world you know getting a cup of coffee or a Red Bull or something and just like waking up enjoying enjoying you know like just the start to your day not 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 stressing about life not stressing about this has to get done that has to get done um, and just knowing that you're gonna go to the canvas and you're gonna paint and you're gonna you're not gonna care about even what you put on the canvas. It's just like a, a flow that happens, like a natural flow. You get into that flow state and, and you're not too worried about what you're gonna eat for lunch or what you're gonna eat for dinner. you just, there's no cares. There's like no plan, there's no game plan. You're just in it and you're having fun and you're doing it and you're not doing it for anybody else. You're doing it for yourself and you just wanna experience that, that joy of just creating and being in the moment and not being stressed out about, like I said, like money or relationships or what people think of you or any of that kind of stuff. Just getting all of that 
you know, out of your mind and going straight into the painting. That's it, that's like a perfect day. That's the only time I am happy is when I'm doing art. So, I mean, other things too, if I'm, you know, riding my motorcycle or whatever, you know, I'm happy, but art makes me really, you know, happy. It's my way of, um, it's like my therapy. Um, it's my way of being able to kind of get through all the fucked up shit of life and um, being able to organize my thoughts in a way that makes sense to me. Um, so it kind of helps me work through my problems and also um, communicate with myself in a really interesting way. That's a good question. Damn, I didn't even think about that one. Hmm. I don't know. I, th I think like really what, what it boils down to, like my motivation and and my, my actions, the reason why I do it is because I feel like I was born to do it. You know, like I feel like, like it's a compulsion. It's like an addiction that has to be like, you know, like done because like, it's almost like self-fulfillment. It's like almost like destiny. Like I, I don't have a choice. Like in the back of my head, if I don't paint, if I don't, you know, go out and network with like, you know, like my friends and, and you know, like, be a part of like the industry like this is like it almost like it's a part of me that like is dying you know so i have to fulfill you know that or or i can't i can't function in life so i don't know i think it's more like destiny like just fulfilling itself i have to do it it's 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 not even like there there's there's no like no influence or no gain or no nothing like that that could you know like keep me from wanting to like chase this you know this path and and to paint and to fulfill whatever it is that's gonna happen i don't i don't know i i, I really don't know i kind of have like a vision you know uh, of myself like with my artwork you know like hanging in like many galleries and museums and all this stuff and whatever uh, but I don't know, like that could just be like an idea that's that's in my head. But at the end of the day, I'm like chasing it, you know, I'm chasing, I'm trying to fulfill um, just this thirst and this need to express myself on canvas. That's really what it boils down to. I think to tell you the truth, a lot to Bansky because he's the one who woke me up you know, and, and not show me the way, but I don't want to be like him. I'm not trying to be him. I'm my own person. I've been painting way longer than him. Um, it's just, it's just, he's, he's a genius with his marketing and how he does his art. So I kind of like learned how he markets himself and, and the genius ways of him doing his thing. So I kind of follow his footsteps in a way where I, not to be like him, but to be myself, but in a marketing art way. Where now it's like, uh, they're calling me the Bansky of the Bronx. I guess it's cool. My dream project, I have so many dream projects. It's kind of funny. I, um, I have like a notes app and a, a journal of all of the ideas that I have for art. I'm not gonna say what some of them are because I don't want anyone to steal my ideas. But I can tell you that um, outside of those, um, those ideas, I really would like to, my, my, my dream is to obviously paint um, a major mural in you know, uh, New York City, like a, like a giant um, mural out here, like on the street, like maybe probably somewhere in um, I'm thinking either like Soho or um, kind of anywhere like in Midtown would be really cool. Or um, I've always wanted to paint on a plane. I've always wanted to paint. I've always wanted to work with um, uh, like different clothing brands. Like I want to work with like a, a major luxury clothing brand and do a major collaboration. There's so many things I want to do. I, I just want to be able to have the opportunity to be able to have the freedom to do whatever I want. That is my dream. I see myself 
in a much bigger wide open space where I could actually, you know, like have all my work fully stretched, show it off, showcase my work for clients that want to come in, that want to see my work, um, have big windows to where I could have like natural sunlight instead of being in this dark, you know, dungeon of sorts. Uh, yeah, and a place that I could like just bring my friends into and that we could create together and I could look, blast music and have parties and like just, you know, like have fun with, you know, like, you know, my other artist friends. That's that's something that I really envision uh, for, I guess, the future me. Um, definitely in the process of manifesting that. It's, uh, you know, that's the thing is uh, certain things, they just take time, you know, they take time, but I'm enjoying my little space that I have here and I've been able to create freely and I've been able to express myself the way that I want in the comfort of my own home. Right now we're living in a time where um, art has, you know, woken up and blown up. You know, like back in the 80s, that's how it was with um, with um, Andy Warhol, Basquiat, all these guys, the Fun Club and all these, this, 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 it was a big thing back then at that time. At that time, there was a big thing where art was big and then it died down, then it started to window away, fade away. And the only people that were standing was like, Basquiat, Andy Warhol, Keith Haring and all of them. Then they started dying off. And then art, art went flat, you know, and then art wasn't, it wasn't like, there was no superstars. And now art made a comeback, you know, and now it's like, everybody's an artist. Art, art, they're painting everywhere. So eventually it's gonna go flat again. It's gonna die down. And um, you have to be in a, in, in a way where you have to be in a place where you know that you're that artist that doesn't go flat that's always there because at the end we'll see who's still standing because art is like a, a one hit wonder you're there and then you disappear the thing with me is i i, I refuse to let my um myself disappear once i'm in it i'm in it all the way so that's why I, i'm i'm i keep keep doing a lot of things and keep going around the world. I want to be known all over the world. I think that the role is different for every single artist. You know, every artist has something different that they want to say, something new that they want to like shed light on in, you know, society or the world. Um, me, I want, I want to express the dualistic nature of life that people know is there but you know, they, um, they don't like to, you know, like, I guess, like read too much into it. You know, that the, the aspects of like good and evil and right and wrong and positive and negative and the duality that we all carry within us, you know, um, those highs and those, those, those highs and those lows, they're, they're natural and they're, they're normal. Um, and instinctual like for us as human beings and sometimes whenever we mess up we could be too hard on ourselves and we could you know like we could sometimes fall into like this pattern or this idea of like hate or self-hate or something like that and, and that's not healthy because you know we're all going to make mistakes and then we get so high you know on our high horse and and everything's going so good that we think that we're better than you know others or or we we view ourselves higher than other people and and we overlook you know the the little people in our lives especially like homeless and you know people that are not doing so well and so there's like this tricky balance even with that where it's like don't regard yourself too high but you know don't stay in those lows whenever they come and it's like just understanding that these happen and it's like trying to find a balance within that so the duality of life is something that i personally like love you know talking about and like playing with uh, aside from aside from that, it's I want I want people to have fun whenever they see my work. I, I want to have fun whenever I paint. So yeah, there is a seriousness to my work, but there's also this fun aspect that I want people to see. It's like man, I'm having fun doing this. Like you know, like the energy is really cool, and and whenever people see it, I want them to like laugh, or I want them to like read something, and I want them to joke around, or I just want them to you know see the joy, you know in my painting sometime as well. So, cause sometimes I do have a lot of fun painting and doing that for sure.
I need podcasts. <laughs> True crime podcasts. I need audiobooks. I need um, a commentary video on YouTube, diving, doing deep dive discussions about the most obscure, random things that I that no one should know about. Um, <laughs> that's what I need to, to create. I have to be clear minded. I have to feel good. The energy has to be right, and then I'll be able to paint. I have to be happy. If I don't paint. If I'm not happy and I don't feel good and the energy's not right, I'm having a bad day, the art's not gonna look good. I want people to remember me as someone who is um, incredibly intentional and um, very, and that has um, a deep understanding of not only art, but myself, and I want People to remember me as someone who is um, meant to be re like remembered in history as um, someone who kind of represents our time and what and through just for whatever themes and ideas and um, I guess experiences and moments that I can capture in my work um, and I want to be remembered as someone who. Um, who fights harder than anyone could ever imagine. How would I like people to remember me as? As a positive role model, a, per a person that, that's always humble and always uh, spread love and the main guy that's always done hearts, you know, and yeah. Um, to be honest, I, I could care less the way people remember me because at the end of the day, every single person that I've ever come into contact with they built up their own idea, their own story about me already. You know, so one person's story is going to be different from another person's story. You know, I might have had a, native, a negative experience with somebody that I don't think is negative anymore, but they might, you know, see it as a negative experience and they probably don't like me or they probably had a, I put a bad taste in their mouth or something or some people, some person might have had like a drink with me and they like, we had a really good conversation and we got really deep. Like, so every single person is going to have like a different version of me going on in their head so at the end of the day like i could care less what people think of me i want i want people to know or i want people to see me for who i actually am in in my life i don't want to be fake i want people to know the person that i am i want i want people to to see me and see the tattoos and the good the bad the ugly all of it like i could care less you know like the way a, a person really views me as long as I'm being authentic myself, you know what I mean? Yeah.